and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about why and how you can upgrade your Django application from Django 1.8 to Django 1.11. Why is upgrading important? Well, basically we have April 2018 and long-term support for Django 1.8 has finished. This means if there is a security issue with 1.8, it will not be fixed. Well, most likely it won't be fixed. Maybe it will be fixed for one of the other versions and somebody will backport it or something like that, but there is no guarantee there will be a fix. The Django team has promised that within the long-term support of a version, like for 1.11, there will be bug fixes and, and security fixes. Uh, also, if you look at the release schedule, uh, those long-term support releases are usually overlapping for a little bit, so you already had like years of time to prepare for the Django upgrade. Uh, so, yeah, there's no reason not to upgrade in, in terms of time. Um, yeah, we're upgrading to 1.11, or at least I'm talking about the upgrade to 1.11 because this is the current long-term support version. We've got April 2018, which is around here. We could upgrade to 2.0. However, 2.0 is not a long-term support version and we would have to upgrade as we go until we hit 2.2, which is uh, scheduled to release uh, in 2019. That's the next long-term support release, by the way. Why should you upgrade? Well, because there are bugs, because there are security issues, because you might end up having incompatibilities with certain libraries, because you might want to use some of the new features that Django is introducing, um, those are all valid reasons, but my app only runs on an Intel server. Why do I need to upgrade it? You have to. <laughs> Running on an internal server doesn't mean that it cannot be hacked. There could be somebody in your network easily. Somebody could be, like, it could be an employee that is doing something bad. It could be a virus that is doing something bad. It could be a VPN access. It could be a misconfiguration that your internal server is no longer internal, but public. This is also true if you say, my app can only be accessed with special credentials, like HD access and HD password protection, right? Well, uh, that works as long as this protection isn't removed. Trust me, at some point there will be a mistake, somebody removes that, somebody changed that, somebody doesn't know what they're doing, it happens. But my app is huge, upgrading it would take months, even years, I don't have the time, I don't have the money. Well, if your app is huge, you probably have a good reason for having it. Like, it might be your daily driver, it might be the tool you're using every day. Can you really risk that this application will all of a sudden no longer work? Can you risk it will be hacked, that you lose data, that you expose data, maybe customer data? I'm pretty sure uh, you will have to go, out, go ahead and, and check the risks involved and see if it's worth it, but I recommend upgrading, upgrading it. The last reason that I want to point out is people might say, but my app uses other libraries that require Django 1.8. They just won't work with Django 1.11 or newer. Well, if you have that kind of dependency on libraries that use an old version of the framework, maybe the library itself is a problem too, because it might have an issue, a bug, a security issue that is not being fixed because Django 1.8 is old. All right, so does Django even have bugs? Yes, of course. It's a framework like every other framework out there. It does have bugs, it does have security issues. It might have less bugs than other frameworks, but it does have them and it definitely does have security issues. This is the uh, statistic printed by CVE details. You can see there is bugs happening or vulnerabilities in this case happening every year with Django. Like there are years when they really strike, like in 2015 or 2011. Um, this could be with the long-term support, so more people are looking for those bugs. It could be because of issues in the implementation. You never know. I mean, if you look at them, they're mostly denial of service bugs. But even a denial of service bug could be bad. I mean, if this is your daily driver for your business and your app is being forced to be down and you can't proceed with your business, then you're going to lose money.
Also, uh, cross-site scripting attacks are very, very common if you look here. Uh, a cross-site scripting attack doesn't mean that your service will go down, but it means that maybe user credentials are being fetched from your service with a cross-site scripting attack, or maybe viruses are being injected into your site. So this is also very, very, well, harmful. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go away from the things that happened in the past and see what's going on now or what has happened actually with all these new releases. Basically, go ahead, check the release notes. Uh, you will have to check them for all of these releases, unfortunately. I don't know why they just make like one major release where they put all the uh, change notes in there, but I guess that's the way it is. Um, go read them and make some like watch out for general announcements where they say like oh by the way we are now finally removing feature XYZ and it's in an external library or something like that also look for Python compatibility if you're still using Python 2.6 2.7 uh, you will find out that you're not able to upgrade at some point I think 1.11 is the last one to support Python 2.7 and the next upgrade to Python 2, sorry, to, to Django 2, will require Python 3. Also, look for features that are being deprecated or removed, and for backwards incompatible changes. Yes, this is a difference. <laughs> so, what has happened with Django 1.9? What is new? Basically, these are some key facts that I want to point out because I find them interesting or because I figured out that they might happen to most people. Uh, or they happened to me. So the off password validators have changed. Basically, that means you don't need to change anything, but you should take a look at what this means. It basically means if you hash a password, the uh, password key derivation function has been made more expensive to evaluate. Let's say it like this. There is a new permission mix-in, which I obviously cannot spell right. Um, the Django admin panel has been restarted, really looks good now. The Postgres database backend has been renamed and some new features have been added. So if you're using Postgres, uh, check out the release notes. It will tell you what to change as well. The foreign key and one to one field require you to use the on delete argument now. This is a, a very, very interesting one, uh, especially when it comes to Django 2.0 uh, migrations because usually when you create a foreign key you don't need to specify anything and it will per default have on delete equals model dot cascade so if you specify a foreign key to a user with no on delete field and you delete that user then all related elements to the user will be deleted too that's what the cascading on delete does for you however uh, they sp said specifically for the 1.9 and future releases, specify the on delete key and make sure to set it because if you don't set it, you will get an error with Django 2.0. Also, it's good practice to just set it. I mean, it's Python and Python is all about, or at least Django is all about being explicit rather than implicit. Also, the syncdb command has been removed. Uh, for those of you that are new to the Django community, syncdb basically was a two-in-one command. It ran your migrations and created the super user, so a pretty useful command when you create a new application, but other than that, you won't need it. All right. Django 1.10 introduced a new Postgres full text search compatibility feature, whatever. Uh, it's not very well documented. You will have to dig around in the source code. Maybe it's documented better now, but when I tried it the last time, it wasn't. Um, you will have to be an expert with Postgres full text search to be able to use the feature in Django. But if you are, um, you might find this feature quite useful because you're just saving yourself, setting up another elastic search or whatever. Uh, to perform search queries. You just have all your search queries in your database server where all your data is stored, so that's a plus. There is a new style middleware, which we will talk about in the uh, video later when we do an upgrade of uh, software that I've prepared. The abstract user's username max length has been increased to 150. Don't ask me why 150. Uh, I also don't know what it was before. I think it was something 
stupidly low. I don't know why they're going to 150. It, it's, it's, it has been increased. The user is authenticated and is anonymous. Methods have been replaced, enhanced, something of both <laughs> as a property. Uh, in a Python world, you would say is authenticated or is anonymous is a property. However, in Django, those two those two methods have been well. It has there have been methods, and they said sometime with Django one point ten, maybe they found a bug or they're like, why is this a method? It should be a property, really. And then they changed it to a property with method function. So, at the moment, you can use both with one point ten and one point eleven. You can use both, but with Django two point zero, you're forced to use this as a property. And if you use it as a function, I think it will not work anymore. Also, Django.core.url resource has been removed and you should use Django.urls. We will see that in the example later. So Django 1.11 is a long-term support release. It introduces subqueries. So you might wonder, subqueries? I know them from SQL. Yes, you do. Uh, in fact, this is this is a feature that's been missing in Django for a long time. You are not you were not able to do a subquery like select all comments where user ID equals and then you start your subquery. Select all user ID or select all IDs from user where middle name like contains an A. I don't know something like that. You were able to do that by collecting the IDs of the subquery, you could fake the subquery, you would collect the IDs and you would then make another statement like, uh, I don't know, comments dot objects dot filter primary key underscore underscore in equals user IDs. But now you're actually able to do a proper subquery, which is pretty cool, especially with the way you can reference like a subquery per, per like uh, easy subquery was obviously possible with Django previously, uh, but with that you can also reference. So you could make a subquery where you reference the the user ID or the comment ID or any other thing from in between the tables. It's a pretty nice feature. Just take a look at the release notes. You are now required to set the time zone parameter in your settings GUI. So PyTC is also a new requirement that's being installed. So don't don't be afraid of that. Just set your time zone to whatever time zone you live in. Maybe UTC, maybe GMT, maybe something. I don't know. Uh, it's also quite uh, good to know that this will also handle daylight saving time for you if you're living in a country with daylight saving time. Um, the future is here, so you don't have to load URL from future anymore in your Django templates. That's a plus. Uh, query set dot query dot having a MySQL feature for query sets is no longer here. You will have to replace it with a raw SQL query. Yay, raw SQL, right? <laughs> also, uh, URLs py or your URL pattern is no longer should include like this, like my project or my app dot URLs, but include like this. You should have your uh, your URLs py file string package name, whatever, uh, as a string. We will see that in the example later as well. Um, also, there has been some other changes with URL patterns, which we will see in the example later. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade. How do we upgrade? Well, uh, we have to prepare. First things first, we should run the manage py run server of uh, Django with the minus wd flag. In fact, this minus wd flag is a Python flag. So this is not specific to manage py. This is a flag that enables Python to print deprecation, that tells Python to print deprecation warnings. And in this case, it pre prints the deprecation warnings for your Django application. Just look at all those warnings. You will have, you will probably have to access all your pages to get all warnings. Uh, some of the warnings you will get sooner. Some of the warnings you will get later, depending on where they happen. If they happen in the middle, where you will get them all the time. If they only happen when you post a form, you will get them obviously only when you post the form. Look at them and go ahead and compare them to the release notes that we linked earlier because that's how you will see how to fix those warnings or sometimes they have some code examples 
or some other times they just tell you while well, this feature is being removed go ahead figure out how to do it other ways um, ideally you have tests for your code um, so these tests might also already print you a lot of deprecation warnings here but obviously no software is perfect you might not have tests and you might have to click through your software one by one also, go ahead and analyze all the third-party libraries you're using in your Django application. Do they support newer Django versions? Do they have upgrades? Uh, maybe do they require upgrades uh, that might potentially break something in your application? And last but not least, requirements.txt is a must. With that requirements.txt, you can check what versions do we have installed now, what versions do we upgrade to, and how do they work together with. Because in, I don't know, five hours after you started developing, you, you will not know what requirements did you update or didn't you update, or, well, I updated this requirement, but the other requirement I didn't update, and it didn't work with this requirement, but the other requirement works, and, like, just make sure you have an up-to-date requirements.txt that lists all your current requirements and the requirements you want to install. Like version monitoring and Git is really good for that. Okay, now how do we upgrade now that we find like all those deprecation warnings? Obviously fix all deprecation warnings that you find, then go ahead and install Django 1.11. Although, um, this, this might be like the, the easy way, right? Uh, maybe take a step back, go slower. Like if you have a huge application, then you install Django 1.9 and then you repeat the process from here. Look at all the deprecation warnings, fix them. Then go for Django 1.10, fix all the deprecations. Then go to Django 1.11, fix all deprecations or warnings or errors and ta-da. Basically, this is the slow way of doing it. Uh, this is the fast way of doing it. The fast way is not always the better way because it might fail. Uh, you might just end up not fixing an error or not fixing a deprecation or you might end up in a situation where nothing works while when you just do a partial upgrade like to 1.9 you will find that some things don't work but most things still work and then from 1.10 and 1.11 and so on it just makes it a little bit easier if you just go to 1.11 and you know what you're doing obviously just go ahead and do it that's no one is keeping you from doing that uh, just one quick disclaimer although if you do upgrade to Django 1.9 or 1.10, please, for the love of God and any other gods out there, don't do this on your live system. Don't do this on your staging system. Do this only on your local development system. Django 1.9 and 1.10 have known vulnerabilities. They are unpatched. They are no longer receiving security updates. So only do it with 1.11 on your live system. If you are like halfway done with 1.10 and you say like, I need to release this now. No, don't do it. Spend another hour or two upgrade to 1.11 or spend another week or two, I don't know, depending on your size, the size of your code. But do not release anything with these two versions, 1.9 and 1.10 I outdated. I, can't, I cannot stress this out enough. All right. Now, uh, when you're done with your upgrade, write a short readme. What did you upgrade? Maybe code examples. Why did you do that? And how did you do that? Reference to uh, the release notes that state what has been changed, etc., etc. This will help others, but also importantly, it will help you if you have, you have to do it again, ever. Sometimes you just run into an error and you're like, Oh my god, this is so stupid. Why did they do that? And maybe you can just put that error into your Google and Bing or whatever search engine you're using. And you're like, oh, there's a blog article. This guy ran into the same issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. This fixed it for me. You know how it works. I mean, just write a blog article. It might doesn't even need to be a super perfect blog. It just can be a GitHub gist that you write or on your personal blog or on your company's blog. I don't know. Something like that. Also, while you're at the process of reading about Django releases, go ahead and look at the release notes for Django 2. Point, uh, yeah, 2. Point star. Um, 
at the time of this video, uh, 2.0 has already been out for a while, so read the release notes there. See what's being changed for 2.0, like the new URL patterns they're introducing are pretty cool. Um, just prepare yourself for the next upgrade. Um, this also helps to understand why things are being deprecated, because it's a, it's a long, long, long life cycle for the whole Django ecosystem. Also, uh, version and library monitoring is really cool to have. Like you can use tools like pip dep tree or update table, and they will show you uh, what kind of libraries you have on your system or in your virtual environment and whether there are updates for them or why this library installed, etc. And also on that note, if you have a GitHub repository, a public one, or even a private one, uh, go check out pyup.io. They offer a service where they check your requirements.txt and notify you when a new version of a software comes out. And they even make a pull request to your GitHub repository. It's a pretty cool service. I don't get paid or anything for that. Just like I found that service. I think it's pretty cool. All right. I think that's it. And we will take a look at the software now.